Okay. So right now is when really I'm getting the feedback from the clay onto what it wants to be. As I see how it responds to being shaped out. The thing I love is listening to the clay and every cylinder of clay has its own uh, personalities. If you fight that, it's, it's miserable for the clay and you. <laughs> Having a predetermined outcome undermines that. And so I've been doing ceramics since 1990. This picture when I was 19 years old. Wow. <laughs> For me, it breaks down to just really exploring shapes. And then the next layer on that is exploring textures. So there's always some development thing, project going on in the studio. And most of them fail. It's the same thing in science. But, you know, every once in a while, some new technique um, works out really well. And then often I'll spend the next two or three years just exploring that and digging deeper into it. I think one of the one of the most interesting things, fun things about this is it's the, the intersection of science and art. You know, the inner scientist I think comes out when I'm tracking, you know, all the glazes, all the different glazes you can try, hundreds of test tiles, everyone with a different code on it. And then my lab notebook keeping track of all the different combinations. Um, because when you find a special glaze and clay combination, you gotta be able to know what it was. You gotta be able to go back and do it again. So here's that red one, that glaze that I tested 30-something reds to see which one worked with this black clay. Um, and it's behaved well. Love it. So that was the first step of centering, getting the clay right in the middle of the wheel. Open up the middle. On to the third step, lifting, to make the walls tall. The foundation and the fundamentals of wheel throwing ceramics are super frustrating because there's every, there's all these steps. Wedging the clay, preparing it to put it on the wheel, centering the clay, opening it, lifting it, and then shaping it. And every one is dependent on the one before it being done right. This is where the science bread and the artist bread synergized because I think I really looked at it like, you know, there's a protocol here. And I actually wrote them out because I had a, a standard operating procedure, an SOP. You learn those foundations and then the fun and creativity is tweaking them and breaking them. In science, you know, we spend years in school learning about the basics of biology and DNA and RNA and you come out with this foundation of knowledge that now it's the creative part. It's figure out how to, how to put all those pieces you learn together to develop a treatment for a rare genetic disease. You know, it's the same joy. The reality in research is that the most common outcome is it doesn't work. One mindset that I'm trying to kind of further is that celebrating the outcome that says, no, this, this approach isn't gonna work, let's try a different approach. And I'm, I'm listening to the clay. At some point, the clay is gonna talk to me. You know, that's really valuable. Let's we'll see what we got. That white crawly glaze that was a disaster when it was first made is just a beautiful combination with this, this clay. I love that piece. Brett follows the data where it leads. If you get an answer that you aren't expecting or an answer you don't like, it's still an answer. And it's still guiding your next question and your next experiment. The culture and the approach that Biomarin takes are kind of interwoven where we focus on rare genetic diseases, where we understand the scientific mechanism of disease. And that allows us to know how to develop a therapeutic that addresses that primary event and then leads to a profound transformational outcome. I mean, the moment that changed me, meeting parents with kids of these diseases we're working on, and just like fundamentally changed me. I mean, that's <laughs> weird. It makes me nervous to talk about, but. 
There's a lot of patients that are hoping that we can find answers for their diseases, and I want to be a part of that. That's why I'm by a Marin. 99% of my job now is guiding teams and helping them succeed. In the ceramics process, it's an artist. It's so much solo. But the science we do at Bio Marin, it's like, it takes so many different skill sets. I'm the head of the musculoskeletal therapeutic area. It's so much about mentoring the project leaders and you know the leaders of tomorrow. Nothing's more fun than brainstorming about ideas, how they're going to approach things. Is it a biologic? Is it a small molecule? Is it an oligonucleotide? Or is it gene therapy? What's the right approach? It's better just to acknowledge, no, I, there's certain areas I know and there's certain areas I don't, but I know somebody that knows that, and I need to go find that person and bring them in and solve this together. That's what I love. Curiosity that takes you in new directions. Crazy, crazy ideas. Ten, year, ten years ago, you'd never think would have worked, but it was somebody's curiosity that pushed them to say, what if? What if you could?